What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about this room. Splunk setting up a soul club. But let me tell you something. We're gonna handle this differently. This room has a lot of tasks and honestly most of the tasks are very straightforward. It is about installing Splunk on Windows and Linux and configuring the forwarder. It is just following the prompt or following the steps in the room. It's a matter of a couple of clicks a couple of clicks but practically i'm going to demonstrate task 10 and how to actually get the last flag before we do that let me first explain to you guys some theory on the installation and configuration of splunk if you follow this thoroughly you will be able to follow through the tasks without any problem okay so so when we want to start working with splunk we are first to go through several steps the first step is the installation the next step is the configuration okay the third step is the log collection and the last step is the uh, analysis Alright, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of my videos on using Splunk handle the last step, analyzing the logs. And we talked about different scenarios of handling or analyzing logs. Uh, uh, most most uh, of these videos are on analyzing logs from cybersecurity incidents. But we actually haven't talked about installation, configuration, and log collection. Okay. So since the installation is straightforward and it can be very easy to follow, same as the config and log collection, I'm not going I'm not going to cover this practically, but rather I'm going to cover the theory which will enable you to understand how all of this works rather than just following uh, wizards and uh, the installation prompts. Let's first understand the theory. The installation. So Splunk acts in two roles or acts as two roles the first role is the main instance and the other one is the forwarder so when you want to install a splunk you have to decide is it going to be the main instance or it's going to be the forwarder usually when you have an account in Spl on splunk you will be able to download the relevant files and you will see that some of the files are for the main instance and some of the files are for the forwarder okay if you are doing this for the first time you want first to install the main instance okay so let's say we select uh, with a dedicated machine server it could be windows or it could be linux okay or mac os but for the time being, it can be most of the time it is Windows or Linux. So we have a dedicated server machine. The server machine will act as the Splunk server. Okay. Now the Splunk server, what's the role of the Splunk server? The Splunk server is going to do two things. The first one, it will gather the logs. and the other role will be the hub it's going to be the analysis hub it's the place where you will go and analyze the logs okay now that's the role of the splunk server so in, in the installation step you're going to install a splunk on a dedicated server machine after you install splunk on a dedicated server machine you have now to think about how to now gather the logs Okay, now to gather the logs, we have to uh, think about what are the logs we want to gather and from where we want to collect them. Usually, the forwarder will help us gather these logs. So let's say we have one Windows machine and another Linux machine. And let's say we have... Um, um, whatever firewall firewall device we want to gather logs from these um, workstations or uh, the sources 
So to gather the logs from Windows, we have to install the forwarder here and the forwarder on Linux. Now for the firewall, the forwarder cannot be installed because the firewall has its own software, right? So what we have to do, we have to configure the firewall to send the logs through a specific port. We're going to talk about this in how to ingest the data to um, uh, Splunk. So here it's going to be forward. The logs will be forwarded using an IP and port to the main Splunk server. So that's the role of Splunk. We have two roles, the main instance and the forwarder. So we have installed now Splunk on Windows and Linux as a main server. Now the next step you want to do, you want to configure the main instance okay, to gather the logs. So basically when you run Splunk for the first time at a server here we're talking about, you have to uh, specify a listener report. The next step, listener report. Usually the listener report can be specified from the main menu of Splunk. Basically you go to the menu and select forwarding and receiving. In here there is an option to add a new port, new receiving port. And let's say by default it is it's actually nine 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 seven okay so once you do that now the splunk main server is ready to receive the logs now what you're going to do you're going to the third step is to uninstall the forwarders remember from here that the forwarders can be installed on Windows and on Linux. Okay, when when you are installing the forwarders, it will ask you, it will ask you about the IP address and the port of the main Splunk server. So we know the IP address of the main Splunk server, and we provide the port that we have configured when we actually configured the listener port. So during the installation of the forwarders, we specify the IP and port of the main Splunk instance. And the last step, guess what? It is the log collection. In the log collection phase, we are ready to select what are the logs to be sent to the main Splunk server. In this step, what we're going to do it depends on the OS. So again, we have Linux and we have Windows. So in Linux, as you will see in the rooms or in the room here, it shows you guys the commands that you need to apply to configure the logs to be sent. So here in this step, in the log collection, we specify the logs that are going to be sent. Usually, Linux logs are stored under var slash log. We can tell the forwarder to monitor this directory and send all the changes to the Splunk server. Okay. Now, on Windows, it's not very much different. After I install the forwarder, what you're going to do on the main Splunk server, you're going to select add data and from there, you're going to specify local event logs. That is the process, simple and easy. That's how you cover the installation, the config, and the log collection. After you, after you specify the logs to be collected, you can now go back to your main Splunk server and start the analysis where you start searching the logs. Now, remember, there is one small thing that we haven't mentioned, or actually I forgot to mention which is the index the index it is where the logs or the collected logs are stored we can create the index in the Splunk server and this is also shown in the tasks um, all right so one last step I want to talk about it is the uh, data ingestion 
So in data ingestion, there we have three methods to ingest or to add data to Splunk. We have manual upload, and we have the forward, and we have the forwarder. Actually, it looks funny, forward and forwarder. But the forwarder is the piece of agent that we install on Windows and Linux. The forward, it's, it was kind of uh, IP and port listener. And it works mostly for network devices such as firewalls, IDS, routers, so on and so forth. They can be configured to send the logs on a specific IP and port. Okay, so now let's jump to task 10. In task 10, we upload web server logs, okay, and we investigate the logs. So basically, there is only one question. So before we do, uh, before we answer the question, let's first upload the logs to Splunk. So we head to the, to the main Splunk instance. As you can see, this is the main website. The main website receives orders or coffee orders. In the backend, it logs all the transactions, the orders, and uh, along with the purchases. So what we want to do, we want to have all these logs ingested to Splunk. Now, basically, these are web server logs. If you don't specify them while uh, installing the forwarder, the forwarder will not forward these logs. You have to upload them manually. If you want all the logs to be uh, sent to Splunk, any logs like Windows, the system logs, Windows logs, the web server logs, you have to specify that from the start. Now, let's assume that you haven't uh, specify that from the start so what we're going to do we're going to upload the logs separately let's do a couple uh, transactions here to generate some logs let's say we're gonna order one uh, Americano here so one and click on order and order from some cappuccino from here quantity of one Click on order and also order some caramel. Okay, now we have generated some logs. We can refresh the page and we go to Splunk. Click on um, add data. Remember, to add data, we have talked about how to add data using the forward. We're going to now upload them manually from the computer or forget about this. Let's upload them from the forward. So it goes the list of the hosts which contain the forwarders that we installed. Since we previously have installed the forwarder on one machine, uh, we're gonna assume that we have already gone through these steps. So we're gonna select, click on existing, and select from the list of the forwarders. Okay, next. Now, you're gonna select files and directories. And from here, we're going to put or write the path that contains the web server log. So we're going to go to the path, this PC, C, and then to init pub, and then select logs. From the logs, we have this directory, WMSVC. This is the path that contains the log files. Yeah, this one. It's actually init pub, logs, and from the logs, let me go, to, go through this again, log files. And this is the path. I'm going to monitor this path for any log files. So right click, properties, and we're going to copy the entire path. And here you go, the name of the file. Directory, sorry. Okay, next. Now specifying the source type. The source type relies heavily on the kind or the type of logs. You can let Splunk choose that automatically or you can do that yourself. So you're gonna click on select and see if there are any appropriate 
uh, logs. So since this is a website for logs, you can choose web or you can create your own. So new and select the source type. These are web server logs, specifically the IIS logs. You're going to select IIS. Going to put your IIS web server logs. The index, we can create a new index. New one. It will be web logs. Gonna review and submit. Start searching. This will automatically pop up the commands or the appropriate command that will be actually uh, retrieving the logs. So source init by blog log files index web logs source type s. Okay. So this page assumingly has the list of all transactions made on the main website. Okay. Now. As you can see, we want to extract the flag, but not from this page. We want to extract the flag from the logs. Let's take a look at the logs. And we can see we have 74 events. Let's now refresh again to reflect the recent uh, transaction we have made by visiting this page. And we still have 74 events. Now let's take a look at one row log here. Um, let's see one of them. So we click on that and we can see the parameters. So we have the date and time, we have the IP address, the type of request, and the URL visited, right? And no other information. So these are the logs that we have ingested. Now to answer the task, we have to visit this URL, which I already did. And we can see history of the transactions that uh, have been made on this website. Indeed, guys, we have actually made three orders. One of the orders, we can see the flag revealed. Okay. Now, what about we want? if you want to see the uh, log entry of visiting this page in Splunk? Remember that the page URL is slash secret dash flag. So if you want to extract the flag or at least find the log in Splunk, we're going to have to keep the command as is here and add one keyword flag let's see so we have two events and indeed guys we can see the two logs that have been collected and generated which contain the page visited secret dash flag although it doesn't contain the actual flag which has to do with the uh, configuration of the what is logged and what is not but at the end, that's how you find it. Okay, so that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm going to see you later.